What next for Algeria? Citizens have scored a first victory with the announcement that the name of the country's incapacitated president won't be put up for a fifth term. Along the way, they've proven wrong those warnings that protests would form in chaos and a return to the blood years of civil war. A victory for peaceful change? Perhaps not quite yet. A new constitution has been promised, but no timetable has been uh, set formally, nor has a departure date for Abdelaziz Bouteflika, who officially is still head of state, even though it's been years since uh, he's spoken in public. The new prime minister was until uh, now interior minister, and potential successors are all Algiers insiders. So will it all die down? Or can we expect uh, those citizens to return to the streets to demand more? Whoever next runs Algeria, it will certainly be the first leader who won't have fought for independence from France. How does an oil and gas rich nation with a bureaucratic state run economy meet the aspirations of a young population that no longer wants the nation to be defined by its past? Today in the France 24 debate, we're asking what happens after Bouteflika. And joining us from uh, Draben Keda, that's in eastern Algeria, Franco-Algerian lawmaker and activist uh, Majid Messaouden. Thanks for being with us. Good evening. Thanks for the invitation. Uh, from London, Algerian human rights attorney Saad Jabbar. Welcome to the show. Thank you. From Barcelona, journalist Francis Gillis, senior research fellow at CDUB, the Barcelona Center for International Affairs. Nice to see you. Thank you. Political scientist Nicolas Tenzer teaches at uh, Paris's prestigious political science institute, Sciences Po. Well, thank you for, for, for stopping in. My pleasure. And thanks as well to France 24's Miriam Amelal, who's been uh, following it all, the France 24 debate on Facebook and Twitter, hashtag F24 debate. Yeah, they're keeping up the pressure this Tuesday. New demonstrations in the capital and other cities, protesters demanding immediate political changes. Uh, the uh, private television station NNR reporting a strike at the Mediterranean port of Bajaya. It's a France 24 report read by Laurent Berstecker. Preparing new slogans for a fresh round of protests. A day after Abdelaziz Bouteflika announced he wouldn't run for a fifth consecutive term, euphoria was slowly giving way to skepticism in the Algerian capital. I'm here to say enough is enough. It's our turn to take over Algeria. We want to see a new generation. We're tired of the old guard. We have great hopes for our country. We want it to evolve and to have a president who's really here. Among the protesters, many young Algerians who weren't convinced by the president's latest announcement. Some were holding up copies of the constitution to denounce the decision to postpone the election. I'm here to ask the regime to leave once and for all. Algerians want to build a second republic without them. Many protesters are worried that even with Bouteflika gone, the country's political elites will continue to pull the strings. They're calling for immediate change. And on social media, some have already begun to plan a fourth Friday of demonstrations. Majid Misaudin, the images uh, in that report from the capital, what's it like in uh, Kabylia, where you are? Well, it's the same, uh, huge uh, demonstrations, but also a huge strike since like five days. No shop uh, open uh, since la last um, Sunday. Uh, so they are really involved in this uh, movement against uh, Bouteflika and against the regime. And I think that uh, the Algerian reaction was in two phases. First, a huge joy because Bouteflika announced that he would not run for a fifth, a fifth mandate, but also lucidity this morning uh, because they are aware uh, of the fact that Bouteflika is still uh, in uh, responsibilities. And uh, what the people want is that Bouteflika uh, has to go, has to renounce, has to give the power to the Algerian people, because Algeria belongs to the Algerian people and not to the regime. And I think that 
the Yajian people is aware of that because this morning uh, they went into the streets, it, uh, lawyers, students, everywhere in Algiers, uh, but also in Bijaya, like uh, the report said. So I'm very optimistic. Tomorrow I will be in Algiers because I want to see that. Uh, I want to see these, these demonstrations. I want to see this youth uh, fighting for its own future. So I'm very optimistic and I'm very proud in this moment to be a Nigerian citizen. Saad Jabbar, uh, was it a similar feeling for you personally uh, uh, when you first heard the news that uh, Abdelaziz Bouteflika would not be on the ballot? And now the fact that there has been this uh, uh, national conference that's uh, been proposed uh, to decide on a new constitution? Well, um, my reaction is this, is the same reaction to the Titanic when uh, the ship was sinking and uh, passengers were asked to change the, sh the chairs to resolve the problem. Um, I think the regime made the worst move, I, which is not commensurate with the aspirations of the Algerian people, in showing or in nominating a Mohammed Lakhdar Brahimi to uh, supervise or manage the national committee to do whatever. We don't know the terms of reference yet. Uh, I have the feeling that the regime is self-renewing. In other words, they are trying to recycle themselves. The same regime trying to recycle itself through uh, one of its old elements, who is called Mohammed Lakhdar Ibrahimi, who failed in Syria, he failed in Iraq, he failed in, 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 in Afghanistan, and so on. I don't, like, I don't wish to be uh, pessimistic, but remember, in 1994, after the coup d'etat of 1992, the regime held a national conference, and they um, hailed it as a conference of re reconciliation and so on. But they brought in not the real political players. They, pro they, they brought stooges, and they hailed the conference as a, you know, a success. And then that paved the way to bring in uh, the president then, or the head of state, uh, uh, Zarwell. And we were promised that that will solve the problem. And then they took, they held the first election for the presidency to have a legitimate president. And these kept holding elections, the highest or record, or record number of elections, and promising uh, reforms which have never been materialized. So the Algerian people and any Algerian decent person who hopes or wishes that his, you know, his country will be looking forward to creating new Algeria, modern Algeria, without being held back by the same reactionary forces who are still running it now. I think the jury will be out. We don't trust this regime because they promised for the last 25 years, uh, they made the same promises and they reneged on them on each occasion. So the, uh, you know, the niceness of the pudding is in the eating. We right. don't it, it, trust it, it, them, and we continue to verify. And I think until now, the chess moves they have made are not in any way commensurate with the aspirations of the Algerian people. Right. You, you, you mentioned skepticism at news that uh, the former uh, foreign minister, longtime UN diplomat, Lakhtar Brahimi, has been uh, put in charge of uh, this uh, road to a second republic as it's being built. On state television, Monday evening, Brahimi uh, spoke. He has, the voice of the people has been heard. The young people who went out to the streets in our cities, in villages, acted responsibly and gave a good image of the country to people everywhere, inside and outside. We must turn this crisis into a constructive process with respect. Francis Gillis, do you, do you share the skepticism expressed there by Saad Jabbar? Well, <clears throat> I think we're in a very interesting phase. We've had the biggest demonstrations since independence in 1962. They've been entirely peaceful. They've been protected by the police, which is very interesting. And um, I don't think these demonstrations could have proceeded uh, for the past two weeks or so, uh, despite the provocations. Don't forget, 10,000 common law prisoners were released two weeks ago. So despite all the provocations, 
What I note is that amongst army officers, there is a kind of tacit complicity. It's very interesting because nobody in Algeria, whether it's the young people, ordinary Algerians, senior civil servants, diplomats or army officers, enjoy seeing their country reduced to what has become a Monty Python script. Nobody in Algeria and nobody anywhere would enjoy their country being made the laughing stock of the world. Now, as for renewing, I don't know whether people who are of the age they are can renew Algeria. I very much doubt so, particularly if many have lived outside Algeria for most of their life. So clearly the powers that be are trying to hold on to some extent. So the question is, the, continue, the confrontation will continue. Will it turn violent or not? Uh, that is the big question of the next few weeks. Regarding the transition, after a April the 18th, Bouteflika will not be the legal president of Algeria. So somebody's going to have to find something. Now, there are people in Algeria who have stature, who are honest, who have worked within the regime over 30, 40 years, who could perfectly well ensure a government of transition. And I'm thinking particularly of the former prime minister who led the great reforms in 89-91, Mouloud Hamrouche. He is of particular interest because he is an army officer. Somebody's going to have to talk to the army. And whatever the qualities of Mr. Brahimi, which is a diplomat of very great, I cannot see Lahda Brahimi talking to the army. Mr. Hamrouche is also squeaky clean, which is very important. Now, many young Algerians may not know his name, but if one put uh, Mr. Hamrouch on television, and as I say, it would have to be a team which was there for six months and which made quite clear they were there for six months or a year, whatever it takes, that the leader of the team would not stand in the elections, that he would try and clean up the economy to some extent, it's very important, and throw the basis for a more modern Algeria. So I think the regime is resisting but I can't quite see how it can resist if the demonstrations carry on on this scale and the demonstrations on Friday are going to have, uh, we want a constituent assembly. In other words, we want a, constitu a new constitution. So yes, the regime is resisting, but I'm not quite sure which way it's going to go at this stage. All right, let, me, let me ask Mariam Amal, uh, Amal you, you, your reaction there, because there is on the one hand this call for change, the call to go fast. Uh, are people wary, though, of a power vacuum that could then mean chaos? Um, I think that the, um, uh, the protesters uh, who took to the streets uh, these days and even today um, are um, really um, conscious that uh, there's a, a risk uh, of chaos, but they, they... Are they pragmatic? They are pragmatic and they're very mature because they took the most of the, their, their parents' and grandparents' experience in the past. I told you last time, it's a new generation uh, which uh, didn't experience uh, the, um, the Black Decade, the Civil War, the Independence War, but they have um, a kind of transmission, a kind of, they, 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 they were told about that and they know that they, uh, they know the risks, manipulation, uh, Islamists and, uh, and chaos, they knew all, they do know all that, uh, so they, they, are, they, they are mature. Um, of course, uh, I, I agree uh, what, with what, what was said. I think that w there's a test this Friday. Uh, we, we have to, I think that the answer will be this Friday. Those protesters uh, will have to, uh, to, to make again a, a, a show force uh, to, to, to answer to, to this announcement. What happens? If next Friday it comes, it goes off the way Miriam describes it, huge turnout and it's peaceful, then what does the regime do? Well, I think that the regime has to make new proposals, basically, because the protesters cannot be satisfied with the proposals nowadays. It seems that the regime, because we all know that, of course, Bouteflika is not reigning anymore, but there is a small clan behind Bouteflika who is really running the party and doesn't want to abandon its own power, because basically it's about the capacity for this power to capture the oil resources, the gas resources, and to control all the economy with 
is a very high rate of corruptions and also a lot of money uh, fleeing abroad. And I think that the main problem is that the regime doesn't want to share the problem for this very reason. And how so, far will they go? That's, that's, I think, the, the, the true questions, because with the, all the, the protesters in the streets, with all also the civil servants, and I remember I, meet, I met a lot of senior civil servants who want to change the things, who are very, I would say, proud of their country, who are willing to transform the country for good, who will probably stand up to any pressure of the regime uh, to just master the change and just to continue to capture the, 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 the economic resources. Uh, so I think, the, the, first of all, the, the, the demonstration will continue and, in a way, must continue because, of course, the transition period is too long. Uh, quite one year, uh, because More than all that. some well, said two years, and even two years. Even you know, because years. we we won't have probably you know if we follow the announcements elections before uh, 2019 or even 2020, and that's just not acceptable to have exactly the same clan uh, running the, 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 the running the, the country I think and that running the, only the economy. The answer that people are waiting for is uh, the withdrawal of the, the system. They don't want them to. They they, they are not waiting uh, the system to uh, give them solution. They just ask the system to go and to give back the yeah. power to the people and to the population. To go, but the fear again of a power yeah. vacuum. Majid Mesaouden, uh, can he just uh, force out yeah, yeah. The, the current system without having something to replace it? Well, uh, all my family is in Algeria. Um, and what they say uh, from the youngest to the, the older uh, is that they don't want anymore this regime to uh, manage Algeria. They do just want them to give the keys back. Uh, and that's the main point. And I think that the demonstration will continue, will go on, as long as Bouteflika's clan uh, wants to remain uh, in, in the place. And one of the reasons why we should not trust anymore this regime is that Lagda Brahimi uh, said in December uh, 2018, uh, three months ago, that no one was contesting uh, Bouteflika. So I think that we should not trust them. And I think that we, the, the protesters uh, have to strengthen uh, their mobilization. Uh, mm -hmm. They have to say to this uh, regime that they can't longer bear uh, the way they manage the country, the way they put Algeria into a wall since many and many years. Uh, a rich country. All right, we're gonna, uh, with, Majid, uh, I'm going to interrupt uh, you because, youth. Uh, Majid, I have to interrupt you because we have to take a very quick break. We'll be right back. Stay with us. You're watching the France 24 debate. <music> welcome back, or welcome if you're just joining us. It's the France 24 debate, and uh, we're talking on the day after of the day after uh, Abdelaziz Bouteflika's name was taken off the ballot for a presidential election scheduled for April the 18th, which has now been delayed in Algeria in the face of the biggest protests that country has witnessed in decades. With us to talk about it, uh, Majid uh, Mesaouden, who joins us from the eastern uh, Kabylia uh, region. Also with us from London, uh, human rights attorney Saad Jabbar. I in Barcelona, Francis Gillis, a senior research fellow at CDOB, the uh, Barcelona Center for International Affairs, political scientist Nicolas Tenzer, who teaches at uh, the French Political Science Institute Sciences Po, and uh, France 24's very own uh, Miriam Amelal. Uh, before the break, uh, we were wondering how fast can the transition go, who can manage it. Now, for the time being, it's the man who was until Monday Interior Minister, Noureddin Bedoui, who's the new Prime Minister. Algeria getting a technocrat who's used to administrating the uh, state superintendents as its leader for the time being. Maud Julien has more on that. This is the man tasked with handling Algeria's transition. Noureddin Bedoui, 60 years old, was appointed prime minister by Abdelaziz Bouteflika and is set to form a new government. On Monday, his predecessor, Ahmed Ouyahia, was seen handing in his resignation on state TV. Mr. Bedoui, though, is no outsider. He's seen as being close to the president and was, until Monday, the interior minister. 
He began his career as the prefect of Oran and became the minister of education and professional training in 2013, an interior minister in 2015. A difficult task falls on his shoulders as he takes on his new position. But he won't be alone. Ramtan Lamamra was named vice prime minister and foreign affairs minister, a position he held between 2013 and 2017. Yeah, Assad Jabbar, that brings us back to those announcements that were made late Monday uh, in Algeria. Uh, We have uh, Bedoui as new prime minister and a bit of a double act with uh, another longtime uh, diplomat, uh, Ramtam Lamra, Lamamra, who is a deputy prime minister, uh, kind of a new post deputy prime minister in Algeria. Uh, How do you explain that? I said the regime is renewing itself, you know, they are relying on the same tenants who have been there for some time. La Mamra is from the same school, the same school of thoughts like Oyahia, those who have uh, propped up the regime after the coup d'etat in 1992. Um, Bedoui is the interior minister. That's why I say until now the regime didn't come up with a technocratic government of a national transition. It shows their thinking. The regime will use the big words of reform, technocratic government, but they will bring their own people and they will do the same old things. We have to judge the regime by its history of behavior and its practice. But do you, do you take the point, Saad, that uh, was made by Francis Gillis in part one of our discussion, that you will need a transition? You can't just have a power vacuum, and so you need somebody who uh, can uh, perhaps manage uh, the power of the military. Of course, but you have to choose the people according to certain criteria. People who have, who people who have, indep- who are independent, and there are many in Algeria. People who have credibility and integrity, and there are many of them in Algeria. They don't need to look for them ab- abroad or import them from other nations. And also to know exactly what you are doing. If you wanted to transition, you have. With whom are you going to discuss? The Algerian regime is the military. The Algerian regime is the military supported by security services and the bureaucracy. And what they have provided from day one is, they said, the new government, fine. Let's see next stage. The demonstrators and the Algeria of 2019 is not Algeria of 2019 or 1991-92, where you have the regime versus the fees and the Islamists who are feared and all the demonize them and so on. The regime now is standing versus the opposition, and the opposition is the Algerian people, because the regime didn't allow any opposition to emerge organically. They have only allowed the parties which accept to be tools in the, in, in the hands of the regime. Therefore, Algeria, instead of having a cushion called opposition parties, those parties don't exist. So the only now two parties which exist are the regime versus the people. How to go forward? We have many examples in history. If the regime is genuinely willing to commit to change and firmly to accept, to hand over. There are means and there are ways. But until now, the signals they have sent, they don't show that they are acting in good faith or the mean business. They haven't heard, I don't think, that they are taking seriously that Algeria is from north to south, east to west, are calling for freedom from the totalitarianism and and dictatorship, like they called in 1954 to 1962, to liberate themselves from the French. We are living the same revolution, but a different one. Let me bring in Francis Gillis on this. Francis, um, we still, for the time being, have the same chief of staff, uh, Ahmed Gaid Salah, who uh, uh, was already fighting for independence before 1962. So it's still the old guard uh, in, in, in that respect. Uh, how do you transition away from the old guard, and how do you do it without uh, there being chaos? Well, I think there are two or three points that need to be made. You have you made the case, and it's clear that one needs some kind of machine, some engineering for transition. You just can't say out for the regime, in with the people. It's, it doesn't mean anything. You've got to run the country. So. The point has been made that there are plenty of honorable and professional 
and clean people who could run ministries, the oil company. Indeed, I've quoted the name of Mr. Hamrush because he knows the military. He was head of government. He is clean. Uh, he fought in the War of Liberation. So there are plenty of other people in Algeria. And the Algerians know perfectly well who they are, even if foreigners may not know. So to that extent, there's no shortage of people with experience of government, of industry, right? Secondly, when we speak of the army, we've got to be careful. We cannot throw away the baby in the bathwater. I have come across over 45 years of visiting Algeria with many officers, including very senior officers, who are professional, clean, and who dislike the way the regime has gone. So I think we've got to separate the Gaid Salas, who I would call a mafia or a crook, nothing more. And there are plenty of those as well. But there are plenty of officers, indeed, even in security. There are people who are perfectly honorable. Now, this may not be visible from the outside, but they exist. And I don't think that the transition, the Reconciliation Commission, using people who are over a certain age, using people, Allah Abrahimi, whatever his qualities as a diplomat, is not recognized by most Algerians as one of them. Therefore, there will be no trust. It's not with the current the government that there can be any trust. And what is needed more than anything else in the next six months is trust. Mary Mamelal, can there be... Can this gulf be bridged between that old guard that's still clinging to power of course. and someone who can bring this kind of trust? Of course. I think that the army is like the, this new generation that we, we saw taking to the streets and, and uh, organizing a movement with uh, very peaceful ways. And uh, they are mature. And I think that we have uh, also uh, an, ar uh, an army which is capable of helping this transition peacefully uh, with responsibilities uh, without uh, maintaining the system. I'm sure about that. All right. Lots of reactions on the hashtag F24 debate, including... Uh, uh, this one, it's just the start. The demonstration should never stop unless they have what they want, full and independent and free decisions. Otherwise, it will turn to be like Egypt as a military coup. A comparison with Egypt has come up all. I think that it's difficult to compare Algeria with other countries. It has its own history with its history of colonization, war of independence, and uh, the black decades. We're, we're always comparing with with uh, the Arab Springs, but Algeria had its Arab Spring in 1988. Uh, and the big student uh, demonstrations. That, this is the Algerian Arab Spring, and it results in uh, mm -hmm. the, uh, the, the, the arrival of the Islamists, the Black Decades, the fact that uh, the army stopped the electoral process. This is a, an important experience that people in the street today don't want to repeat. Uh, this is an important, I think that it's, it's another step today in Algeria. Majib Nisauden, is that something that's high on people's minds I that you speak to where you are, the, 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 that it, people are cautious and wary because of what happened during the Civil War years? No, because uh, the majority of the people well, that can, are taking... Can I answer? Uh, First, Majid, then, 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 well, then Francis. Go ahead. Yeah. Majid. Well, yes, I, I was saying that most of the people that, that are taking the streets now are very young. Uh, if I take the example of my cousins that are demonstrating every week, uh, they, are not, uh, they are not concerned about this blackmail made by the government uh, to choose between uh, autocracy, to choose between corruption and Islamists. Uh, as I told you last time, there's a third voice, and this third voice is the Algerian people. And they cannot uh, expect uh, the Algerian people to trust them if they recycle, like it was said, uh, people from their administration. Many people that are in responsibilities today were already managing Algeria, and I was not born yet. So this regime uh, can't continue anymore. This regime has to stop. And I think I'm very optimistic. I repeat it every time. The demonstration will not stop till the regime is uh, in this place. And as Miriam uh, Amlal said, we cannot compare Algeria to any other country because its history is very unique, specific. It's a, a young country uh, that has been colonized by France for more than uh, 100 years. And it's a new country. And the, the youth, especially the youth, uh, is claiming a real democracy, civil rights, freedom, 
and no one and nothing can stop them. And really, being there today, uh, since a few days, they have nothing to lose. They tell me, we will demonstrate till the end because they are feeling that something is happening and they will not stop till this regime is running Algeria and putting Algeria into the wall. Nicolas Tenzer. Yes, I, I think that, uh, you know, all the narrative, you know, I or the chaos is used by all the dictators around the world and especially, you know, in the Arab region. And I think that, uh, you know, all the people are saying, you know, and especially the poor is saying, well, uh, if, uh, if uh, I, we don't stay in the power, if we are not made, managing a peaceful transition, then we will have the Islamists. But if we consider the, tr the reality in Algeria right now, you don't have a lot of Islamist groups. You have some, of course, but I think that's not so things that we have to fear right now. Of course, there is small risk, but I think the real problem is that there will be more risk if the government is just uh, trying to uh, maintain its own power and to roll over the economy and the society. And the second thing is that if you see all the, the young protesters, you should not forget that you have 1.7 million students in Algeria, that you have uh, uh, among them, most of them are women, not men. And I think you have yes. these well-educated people, uh, very well-trained people, and they are able to exercise the power. You agree with that, Francis Gillis, that uh, if, if you have an election uh, tomorrow, it won't be like in 1991, where the first big multi-party election, uh, the first round, it's the Islamists who came out way ahead, and that's when the whole process was stopped by the military? Well, I think you can't compare. I covered that period as North Africa correspondent to Financial Times and doing a lot of BBC work. The marches of the Islamists through Algiers, where men and women were, were separated, there was something death-like about those things. There was a basic breakdown in society. Today, what we see in the streets of Algiers is young people dressed in European-style clothes. They could be Mediterranean from anywhere in Spain, France, or Italy. Some women are veiled. Most of the young ones are not. The line of fracture no longer runs on Islamists versus non-Islamists. And one of the problems of reporting in the West, not least in France, in Britain, in Spain, is that we continue to speak of terrorism, radical Islam, 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 Islam. But I'm sorry, the problems of Algeria are not those. Now, when we come to the young people, they have shown a maturity, or the demonstrators have shown a maturity and a sophistication that would put many European demonstrators to shame. So these people are very mature. Now, one thing that must be avoided at all costs is violence, because our friend who comes from Kabylia knows what the revolt of 2001 in Kabylia did enormous damage to Kabylia. When you confront a regime like that with violence, you end up on the floor. So this must be avoided at all costs, all the more as we have the war of liberation and we have the black decade. It gets you nowhere. And this is where the demonstrators, and I'm sure a lot of Algerians in their 20s and 30s and 40s and 50s, entirely agree. Because if you look at the crowds, there are a lot of people in their 40s and their 50s. There were big entrepreneurs in the street. There were artists. There was the whole of Algerian society. I mean, one quarter of the Algerians between the ages of 15 and 60 were in the streets in the last two weeks. So I think what the question is finding the mechanism, the, the, the regime, or at least the rotten part of the regime, let's say, will try and resist. But there again, not everybody is rotten, which is why we've got to be very careful. When we speak of entrepreneurs in the private sector, some of them are rentiers, close to the Bouteflikas, and they should go. Others, like the, uh, the richest man in Algeria, who is a Kabyle, Issa de Rebrab, has created more than 100,000 jobs. And there are plenty of those in Algeria. And if you take every walk of society, every trade, you've got people who are good, who are honest, who have been trying to survive in this very difficult regime, and others who are not. All right, I want to talk about the weight of the past, uh, because uh, we have the weight of the past that we just described with the blood years. Uh, there's the weight of the past with the fight for independence. So when there are remarks from this side of the Mediterranean, well, everybody pays a little bit closer attention. France's president was asked about the change of foot in Algeria. Emmanuel Macron happens to be in Djibouti on the first leg of a tour of East Africa. Maintenant, il appartient 
It's now up to Algeria to make sure that over the next few weeks and months this conference takes place in order to produce constitutional proposals that will lead to the holding of a referendum. It should be a reasonable transition that takes place within a democratic framework in complete transparency. Saad Jabbar, your thoughts on Emmanuel Macron's words? Um, I think we shouldn't engage in any cosmetic exercise without knowing, firstly, whether the regime really intend to accept the people's will, because the people have spoken and voted with their feet. They have voted in their demonstrations that they don't want this regime. They want a change. We have to work, as Francis Gilles said, we have now to force the regime by issuing or putting forward certain proposals. Just, you know, the normal people, because the streets or the people themselves have to produce their own leaders. We don't want um, cosmetic or, you know, ex exercise to say, look, we have uh, consulted and they do this, this, this with the same old ways. Now, the responsibility falls on the regime itself. But let's, uh, just a question do about, let, let me ask the question about France, because uh, we have this reaction on the hashtag F24 debate, warning the French president, stay away from the decisions about the future of Algeria. It's our country, our destiny, and the people said their word. Otherwise, the situation here will get out of hand. You can say goodbye to a peaceful France, he says. Uh, I think, I think, I beg to differ with this. Look, mm -hmm. the French, one understands the problem. Whatever they say, they will be condemned or until the regime wants the French, when they support them, it is not an interference. When they say the wrong things, it's an interference. One should take the matters, you know, above that, take matters forward. Algeria needs the whole support of the democratic nations. We are one hour from Marseille or from Spain. We haven't taken advantage, especially the regime itself. They are, they are using the past in order not to move forward. If we relied on, 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 on the French to support us, to get us the best, favored nation with the European community, like the Polish and other Eastern Europeans relied on Germany and others, we haven't made use of any past, either with the enemy or with the friends. Therefore, there was a total failure. I don't, I hope that the French will really play a positive role in encouraging an organic transition and organic democratization in Algeria, because the future is when you have legitimate and democratic government in Algeria, they will not use the past in order to beat you. All right, Nicolas so Tenzer, what should... What we should... have a common interest to see that the Algerian people are the best guarantors of the security of, of Algeria, of the, the best guarantors of stability for Algeria. Of, st of the stability. The regime Ni Nicola, is willing Nicola or Tenzer, they wanted all the ways to Nicola take Tenzer, the society hostage by saying... If without us, you will not have stability. Therefore, you end up with dictatorship. That's right. the price. Nicolas, Nicolas without... Tenzer, let me ask you, what, what, what can France do to, what, to help and not to hurt in this case? Well, I think it's a very difficult question because, first of all, I think that neither France nor other, any other democratic country could lecture you know, the Algerian people or the Algerian power on what they have to do. But remember what Emmanuel Macron said, you know, it was in the General uh, Assembly of the UN. We are siding with the freedom fighters. It means that we have to engage with all the people supporting freedom there. That we have to do. But of course, we cannot lecture. We cannot say, you must do that, you must do that, and not do that. Of course, that we cannot. Of course, we have to pay attention to what happens, because, of course, Algeria and France has a sort of very um, intertwined story. And, uh, symbiotic. With, uh, yes, and symbolic, and with a lot of resentment, a lot of uh, also discontents, a lot of misunderstanding. And I think we have to be cautious. But on the principle, we really have to side with the freedom fighters, with the new generations, with the people who are supporting the change in our area. If we could help, we have to. Unfortunately, I think that um, everything that comes from France is uh, very suspicious, uh, even from this young crowd. Uh, I think that w I agree with you. We must be very, very cautious uh, when you when you talk about Algeria, when you, you're French president, and even when you're not French. Uh, a few a few days ago, Washington reacted to to this uh, movement and demonstration is in Algeria, and I remember uh, one slogan uh, on the street uh, during the demonstration saying, "Dear 
U.S. Uh, stay away from our problems. It's uh, family problems. Uh, there's no more oil. If you if you want to uh, if you want oil, you have to you, you will have olive oil. But just stay away. I think that the interference is is a bit rejected by Algerians. It's a kind of um, uh, it's a it's a tradition. Especially That's why everyone must be very very cautious with that. And we have also to stop all the narrative about yeah. stability, especially, because I think yeah. that to have dictatorships never brings stability in any place of the world. Majid Nisaudan. Yeah, especially when uh, President you. Macron uh, uh, nice um, didn't find anything to say to, to, the, to the candidacy of, uh, of uh, Bouteflika, that uh, everybody knows that uh, Bouteflika is not running anymore Algeria. And as a French president, he didn't find anything to say to this fifth mandate. So nobody trusts Emmanuel Macron on what he can say to, uh, to the Algerian people. And uh, they want him to stay back uh, to take care of the French people uh, because he has uh, enough problems to solve there. And uh, I think that uh, the Algerian people is uh, mature enough uh, to deal with its own future. And uh, it will not uh, let anyone and anybody uh, tell him what to say and how to do it. I'm just really, um, really worried, and I, I already said that, uh, of the reaction that could have the army uh, and the police if the demonstrations uh, last. Uh, because uh, I think this power, this regime, is capable uh, to, to do anything uh, to keep uh, its, uh, its power, to keep uh, its regime like that, its mafia, uh, its clan, and its interests. So I'm very worried, and uh, I, I, I will have a look, uh, a special look to what will happen in these few days, and I will be tomorrow in Algiers, and I hope everything is... We'll, 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 we'll go peacefully. Fr Francis Gillis. Say can I say something? We, sure. We've got to come down to reality. We're not speculating. I lived through the Hamrouche government when the French government, Monsieur Mitterrand in particular, was very anti the reforms. And there were a lot of things against the reforms being boldly tried in Algeria at the time. Mr. Mitterrand was Minister of the Interior in 1954 when the revolution started in Algeria. He could not forgive what happened then. And the French actively undermine the reforms. You've got to remember this. The rest is talk. So today, the least you can ask of the French is not to undermine what is going on in Algeria today. Forget the positive Oops. side. Mr. Trump, I've checked today, couldn't care less about Algeria. But what we need is a France that basically remains more or less deaf mute and in particular does not try to undermine what is going on in Algeria in view of what the French government and president did in 1989-1991. I lived through that. It was a shame on France to do it. This must be avoided this time. That is a key point. And everybody who knows the history of those years, and I lived through them in detail, I confronted French officials. It was very difficult. The French could not believe there were reformers in Algeria, and those who understood it were very happy to undermine the reformed, with a very few honourable exceptions. All right. Let's, uh, time, let's hope the times have changed uh, um, and, and that, uh, of course, uh, as events play out this week, including Friday, as Miriam was saying, that uh, things will go uh, peacefully. I want to thank Francis Gillis for joining us from Barcelona, Majid Messaouden for being with us from uh, Kabilia Saad Jabbar in London, Nicolas Tenzer, Miriam Amelal. Thank you for being with us here in the France 24 debate.